side anyway. Hold the side up. Okay. Hello and welcome to this special live online event to launch the London Region Veterans High Intensity Service. I'm Malcolm McFrederick. I'm one of the directors at Camden and Islington NHS Foundation Trust and I'm absolutely delighted to be here to officially launch this pioneering and extremely valuable initiative. The reason I'm absolutely delighted because I'm a veteran myself many years in the infantry, the Royal Irish Regiment. And I know from tragic experience of particular close friends and comrades, the life changing impact the high intensity service should be able to have. At today's event, you will hear from Nikki Murdoch, who is also a veteran, a member of the government's Veterans Advisory Board and chair of the Armed Forces Public Patient Voice Group in the NHS. There will also be speakers from all our partner organisations and you will be able to send in your comments and questions, which we will answer and reflect on at the end of the event. I'm now going to hand you over to Rob Henderson, the operational service manager for the service. Rob, over to you. Thanks, Malcolm. So before we hear from our guest speakers, I have a few housekeeping notes to go through. So please be aware this event is being recorded and you've got the option to post comments and questions using the Q&A function in Microsoft Teams and you're able to post these anonymously if you want to protect your privacy for any reason. You'll see a box that says post anonymously when you open the Q&A box and you can send any questions at any time during the event. Apologies in advance if there are any technical issues at our end or at yours. However, we'll be putting the recording of the webinar on our website when the event is over, so you'll be able to watch it back in full. So this is what's going to happen today. First, you'll hear from Nikki Murdoch, MBE, who Malcolm earlier introduced. Then we'll show you a short film about the high intensity service put together for us in collaboration by some of the veterans involved with the project. And after that, I'll say a few words about how the service is currently operating about what's been achieved already, and we'll get some reactions from guest speakers from each of our partner organisations. We'll also hear from Anthony, one of the veterans whose story highlights some of the difficulties that people can go through after their service. And finally, we'll have a chance to answer your questions and go through some of the comments that have been sent in during this live event. So I'm delighted to first introduce to you Nikki Murdoch, MBE, who's a veteran and chair of the Armed Forces Public Patient Voice Group in the NHS. She's going to tell us more about why the HIS was commissioned by NHSE, in addition to other veterans' mental health services. So Nikki, over to you. Rob, uh, thank you very much indeed. And firstly, can I say thank you very much for inviting me to this really important launch event. Um, as you've heard, I am a veteran, an army veteran of 30 years. Um, and I understand also what it's like to be a mental health patient. Uh, for 20 years of my 30 years military service, I was hiding my sexuality, which ultimately led me to have a mental health crisis, which I actually hid from the military in 1997. During that time and during that crisis, I was actually treated by the NHS because I wouldn't tell the military. So I understand the stigma that is associated with it. And further downstream, I also was diagnosed and treated by the NHS for cancer, uh, which again necessitated 18 months worth of mental health treatment, um, much of which was um, based around my own guilt uh, that I felt because I wasn't deployed on Operation Telic or Herrick. Um, because I was sitting in a hospital having chemotherapy. So I do understand what it's like to be a mental health patient. And then after I left the army, I became CEO of the Defence Medical Welfare Service, a small charity that operates in NHS hospitals. And uh, that led me to understand a bit more about the NHS and how it worked. Um, and I was asked to take over this role as, as chair of the public patient voice group for the armed forces, which basically advises and influences NHS England 
in and around the issues facing the armed forces community. And that includes the serving, the veterans, the reserves and their families. And it won't have escaped anyone on this call's notice that um, it was a very high profile um, and public consequences of the conflicts in which British soldiers, uh, sailors and airmen have been involved, which led to the development of um, two mental health services, the transition intervention and liaison service and the complex treatment service. And they were introduced by NHS England across the whole of the uh, NHS England dependency. And they have been developing all the time by listening to patients. And as a direct result of that, the high intensity service has been developed because there was recognition that there wasn't anything that could help people in a crisis. And uh, I'm delighted that, that the high intensity pathfinders have been rolled out across uh, England as a developing service. And I'm absolutely delighted that they're pathfinders at this juncture because it will help inform the national commissioning of veterans mental health services in 2023. So there'll be a suite of mental health services available for whatever need arises. And that's great news for our community. So back to you, Rob, but I'm absolutely delighted to be here and I'm delighted also that it's working well already. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Nikki, for joining us today and for saying your story there and for support, the support for the service also. So to give you some more details about how the high intensity service is working on the ground, we asked Neil Davies, a veteran who's been through some personal struggle himself and come out the other side of that, to produce a short film interviewing some of the team who are actually supporting veterans on a day to day basis. This is filmed in conjunction with Neil's own highly recommended YouTube channel called On Parade. And you're going to hear interviews from Laura White and Vicky Elliott, who are providing support to high intensity service clients from Stoll and Walking with the Wounded, respectively. Um, Gary Sell uh, is on the video also, who's one of our veteran peer support workers, as is Katie Broomfield, who's talking about family and carer support. Uh, and you'll also hear from myself. So let's uh, hear that video now. So this stands for High Intensity Service, and it's a, a newly commissioned service by NHS England with the intention really to provide as much support as possible to veterans and their families in a crisis. I think the real benefit of this is that it's not just the NHS, we've got Walking with the Wounded, the Ripple Pond, and we've also got Stoll all working together with us. How does Walking with the Wounded fit into the HIS team? We've got people who are experts with housing, with budgeting, with claiming for benefits, retraining to get back into employment again, even down to sort of like family legal advice. Tell me about Ripple Pond. We're a peer support network. We support families who have a loved one with a physical injury or a loved one who is going through poor mental health. Stop is more about housing as well, isn't it? We provide loads of housing for veterans and also veterans' families as well. We're already coming across some people that may need more suitable housing and Stoll is exactly where we'd be looking to go with that. Stoll can also use the HIS and have a kind of cleaner pathway into that service as well. We've got NHS clinical staff who would do some of the more psychologically focused work with people. Maybe they need to be linked back in with the veteran community. We're very much underpinned by lived experience experts like yourselves, and we've got veteran peer support workers in the team. As the name suggests, I'm a veteran. A veteran that has been through TILS, even had to stay in combat stress for a short while. Not only can I relate as a veteran to other veterans, I can also relate from mental health. Just go out and meet veterans that come through our service, reassure them, talk to them buddy to buddy. We were picked because the expertise that we've got are going to benefit the people we're working with and help the team work. We're really lucky at this. All of us have got such a wealth of knowledge from our different backgrounds that we've been able to do such good wraparound support for someone. We talk and we kind of exchange hints and tips. Oh, well, there's actually this service that could help you or have you tried speaking to your veteran about this or that? We have 
regular meetings every day. Once clients' assessments have been done, we do risk assessments on the different environments, whether we're meeting them in a public place, meeting them at their homes, or meeting them in the hospital. Within 72 hours, we should have had assessment one and assessment two done. Then we'll take it back to a multidisciplinary team meeting with everybody there. When HIT was first described to me, I envisaged it as Avengers Assemble. They've all got an individual superpower and they're coming together as a team. That's a really good example of it. Who's in this area at this time? We need two people to get to this person. Utilising and kind of tapering what the, the best service for that veteran would be at that point in time. Because often what happens is, you know, you might go to one service and they say, OK, we're trauma focused. You go to another one, they say we're about alcohol use. What we're trying to do is bridge the gaps. So if people are falling between services, we can get on the phone to them and try and get people working together. This has been like one of the most useful things about the project. We get such fast and effective advice. It really saves time. It's just way more effective for the client as well hopefully get the person away from being in a crisis situation where they might have to be admitted to a hospital. And then if they need longer term care with, an, with another team, then we find them the support that we can then link people into on a longer term basis. It's all very well of me being empathetic and compassionate towards individuals, but them having someone who understands exactly what they're going through has just been so, so helpful. We've partnered up on a few of our clients, me and Gareth. A lot of them are a bit reluctant to seek help, either they're embarrassed or ashamed to ask for help. Really reassuring to them to know that there's other people that have had similar experiences. The benefits of having someone who can just speak right on their level, where they don't feel like they're being judged and they feel like they're understood, is the, it's the best bit about this project, I would say. Families are very much part and parcel of trauma with veterans. The question is, what support are they getting? The Ripple Pond will offer separate consultation and assessment for anyone who might be caring for that veteran. And we do have a lot of people sharing, you know, my husband, my son, they're just, they don't open up to me. They've locked themselves away for four days. I don't know what to say. If there's not someone there for you, there's not someone to pick you up and there's not want someone to say, we understand, we get it. It does get better. It does get easier. And this is how we've achieved it. It could probably be quite easy just to walk away. What our members do for each other is, is be there at the times when things are just really, really difficult. I said, I want to show you what soldiers are like. We're going to get there 20 minutes early. Now look out the window. And he went, I can see him. He's hiding behind the bush looking at his watch. I said, yeah, he wants to come in dead on two o'clock. <laughs> The famous five minutes before a parade. This morning, my first appointment, I thought given an hour would be loads of time to ask for someone to get there. No, no, he wanted at least an hour and a half, two hours. We can take a referral very quickly. You can refer yourself or your family can refer you or you can go and via a professional. One of the benefits of using the HIS is that we respond very quickly. Within six hours, we'll have checked out your referral and within three working days, we'll have been out to see you at your home. Each week we're getting busier and busier. The more people hear about us, the more different organisations are referring into us. Unfortunately, some people might be in a police station or at a hospital and we can get out and, uh, and, and see you wherever you are. I think I had to wait a, a, a month for a diagnostic and that was a period when I really need to talk to somebody. What's going on? What's the process? Am I OK? If I had the help that I'm giving to veterans when I was struggling, my road to recovery would have been a lot shorter. My husband is in the army. He was injured in Afghanistan um, in 2010, supporting military families, veteran families. It's just such a passion of mine. I think it's uh, such an incredible group of people to put up with what they put up with and to do what they do. And I just think being part of that community and being able to offer support is brilliant. Are you from a military family yourself, Vicky? I am. My dad was in the RAF. Oh. I wouldn't say that's the military then, would you? I know. I know. <laughs> Everything that we do with each of our veterans, they're all different personalities, they all work and understand at different levels, all have different things going on. We will put in place a care plan for them and their care plan is tailored personally. So we're saying to the guys out there, speak up, the troops are there ready to support you. The sooner someone comes to us, the sooner we can get them on that, that positive journey. The longer you keep it in, the longer it haunts you. 
So we hope that's given a flavour of who the team is and the approach that we take when we're working with veterans. And we'd also like to remind people watching that if they have any questions, please just use the chat function on Teams and send those through and we'll try and answer those as best as we can. So we've already had some great successes with people uh, helping to start to tackle the causes of what's been driving them to feel at the end of their tether uh, and giving them strategies to manage some of the strong emotions which can be so destructive for them and for others day to day. We've also helped a number of people into more stable and supported accommodation after they found themselves homeless uh, and in a hospital bed. And we've been talking with overwhelmed partners and family members about their difficulties and offering real direct help with things like debt and substance misuse and attending court appointments. So as you've heard throughout, this is a service created by partnership and we're going to get some thoughts from those partners now. So I'm, I'll first pass you over today to Simon Locke, who's the National Programme Manager of High Intensity Support for Walking with the Wounded. Thank you, Rob, and good morning, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to say that uh, Walking with the Wounded are extremely excited to be involved in the high intensity service, um, not only um, within the Greater London area with Camden Lizings and NHS Foundation Trust, but um, across the majority of um, the country. Um, you've already heard from uh, Vicky, who is one of my veteran liaison support officers. Um, and we've heard a little bit about their role that we've got 14 veteran liaison support officers around the country um, and they are showcasing what we believe is the future of veterans care integrated with the third sector and the NHS um, veterans mental health teams, which is this real intense as it's needed in community combined clinical and non clinical support. Um, and, and that's the framework that I think that we're already starting to see is um, being so well received by those individuals that we're trying to support out in the community, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, Walking with the Wounded, though, don't um, just showcase what we do in silo. We work with great organisations and as part of um, um, this collaborative, we're working with, um, as we've already heard, two other third sector organisations such as Stoll and um, the Ripple Pond. Um, it's really important that we all understand that not one singular service or thought can help everybody. Um, we must work together um, and move forward together supporting the client or the patient um, and their family members as, uh, um, as we try and get them back to good health. Um, we've done this um, at, a, at a level unofficially with the NHS um, in other regions. So it's really exciting now that we're getting to do this um, officially um, within a contractual um, way so that we can work as that collaborative multidisciplinary team. Um, and what's really um, e exciting at, at the grassroots, the clinical team are being supported by the support arm and the um, in-care community support workers just as much as it is the other way around. Um, and I fully believe in us at Walking with a Wounded, fully believe that this sort of service is the future to veterans, um, high complex mental health needs. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, Simon. Now we're going to hear from Claire Bendel, who's Director of Services for Stoll. Hello, everybody, and, and, and good morning to you all. And um, thank you, Rob. Um, like Walking Wounded, Stoll are providing a veteran support worker to work in this exciting project. You will have seen Laura, our worker, um, in the video. And I'll say how I've, I've seen that video a few times now, and I still find it really powerful. Um, credit to everybody involved. But to me, it shows how important it is to ensure that support is right at the right time for veterans. Um, at Stoll, we're the leading provider for housing support for vulnerable veterans. We're based in London and Aldershot. Um, we have a track record of working with the London TILS team and our experience of working with veterans include those that have significant mental health issues, addictions, debt issues. Um, often um, veterans you work with have tried accessing other services and there's just nowhere else to go or they're just in one, they're just in some sort of crisis, one reason or another. 
um, we can see the change that quality services that really understand veterans and their families can make. And we are really proud to be part of this new project. We work closely with the other partners, such as you've just heard from Simon um, and the walking wounded and support workers we work with, Ripple Pond and us at Stoll work in unison within the multidisciplinary team. And as Simon has already outlined, the support worker role that we provide will be looking at supporting veterans and their families to have a service that's responsive, understands the issues that veterans face and really places the veteran and their families at the very heart of their own support. We have hope that the new partnership continues as it start as it's um, as started, and that we will continue to contribute to the partnership. Thank you. Back to you, Rob. Thank you, Claire. Thanks for that. Just a reminder, also for anyone who's watching, if you'd like to send in a question, please just send those via the Teams chat box. And now I'd like to hand you over to Katie Broomfield, who's Service Support Development Officer at the Ripple Pond. Thanks, Rob. Um, as others have said, you know, similarly, the Ripple Pond are really excited to be part of this new HIS service. It's such a privilege for us to be involved. Um, thank you to the guys who put that video together. I think it's, it, you know, it's incredible and it really does just sort of drive home the impact um, and makes it clear just how important this new HIS service is. Um, I echo what Simon from Walking with the Wounded said, that working in collaboration is so important in ensuring that the veterans and their families receive the best possible care <coughs> and support, which I think is what makes this HIS service so exciting. Um, the Ripple Pond is a peer support network that offers support to any adult who is living with or supporting a veteran or serving person with a physical injury or poor mental health. Um, we've got members across the UK each member has a different story, each member has a different experience. Um, we offer more than one avenue of support, so members can choose which option or mix of options works best for them. Uh, we know not everyone wants to be on Facebook or WhatsApp, so you know you can access the support however you uh, see fit and whatever suits you the best at the time. Um, how members choose to engage is entirely up to them, but being part of the Ripple Pond and being a member of the Ripple Pond means being part of a community of people who really understand you and understand what you are going through and I think that is just so important. Uh, their friends will celebrate the highs and be there to pick you up during the lows. Uh, our involvement with HIS is a little different from Stoll and Walking with the Wounded. Um, so when someone is referred to HIS, their support will be given the option of being referred across to us at the Ripple Pond. Um, anyone referred to us from HIS will speak to a member of staff who will discuss their situation and work with them to establish what their support needs and wants are. And I think that's also really important um, that the support is based on what you need and want at the time. Um, you'll either be given the option of joining a support network, which is access to WhatsApp, regional or local, uh, Facebook, so a uh, more of a chat forum, somewhere you can pose questions, um, access to our Zoom talks, our meetings, and when we're allowed to, face-to-face uh, -face meetups. Um, if it is decided that the support needs are higher, we can enter you into the mentoring programme, which is um, we have a number of volunteers who've been trained as part of the HIS service to work with anyone referred to us by HIS over a period of months um, to help you um, overcome obstacles, <coughs> access support and ensure that you, the individual, is supported. Um, Finally, just one of the reasons that we are so pleased to be involved with the service is that we feel so strongly that families should be more included in the recovery pathway um, for veterans going through treatment for mental illness. The family are the ones who continue the care and support once a veteran is home. Um, the more they know and understand about the treatments and the process, the better equipped they are uh, to help support the veteran. I think as well, um, it also shows that the services that are available to the veterans are recognising the importance of this family support and hopefully in turn this will show families that they do deserve support too. Thanks Rob. Thank you for that Katie and just as a reminder for people uh, there's a question mark icon at the top of your screen if you'd like to send through any questions for us to answer in a moment. Uh, we've got a few which um, which we'll get to. So the next part is we'd like to welcome ex-Royal Marine Anthony Mackell, who's been a key part of the service user voice in developing the high intensity service, having himself been through an experience of needing urgent care. And Anthony's going to speak a little bit for us now. Thank you, Rob. 
Um, before I go any further, I'd just like to thank Nikki Murdoch for her story that she gave us all earlier. And what I've, I sh probably shouldn't have found quite surprising is that although our stories are 20 years apart, in some ways they're very, very similar. So hopefully this is the start of changing the outcomes for veterans' mental health. So I'm a lived experience expert. As Rob said, I've been involved in the um, development of the HIS project and myself and other veterans have explained our issues and our needs and the shortfalls in the current system and hopefully now a lot of those gaps are going to be closed. So my story is I served in the Royal Marines from when I was 16 to when I was 27 and deployed in the first Gulf War and first started suffering with depression in 2003. Later on in life, I um, had a, a career in financial services and then in a couple of years ago, I had a, a breakdown. My head just went completely wrong. So I went to my GP and said to him I wasn't feeling well, I was feeling suicidal and he um, prescribed me some antidepressants and said you'll be all right in six weeks. Now, within that six weeks, first off, I drove my car into a brick wall to try and end my life. And fortunately or unfortunately, I only ended up with a broken ankle. But um, off the back of that, I was admitted into a psychiatric hospital. Whilst I was in there, I was sat with people with clipboards. They were asking me questions. I was answering the questions and they were thinking that there was probably nothing wrong with me. What I did was was all right and normal. One of my friends came to see me and he said, Anthony, are you actually telling them what's wrong with you? Because you only look like somebody who sat there who's got a broken ankle. And I really thought I was explaining what was wrong. Um, whilst in there, I was allowed out. And on one of my trips out, I went and bought the biggest kitchen knife I could find in Morrison's and I used it on myself in public and once again ended up in intensive care and then back into the mental hospital. Whilst in there, because of my dangerous driving and using a knife in public, the police kindly put me up in, in prison for a few weeks. Um, and during the time in there, I got no mental health support. So when I left, not only was had I been isolating and mulling over all the issues that had got me in there in the first place, but I was also homeless and had nothing. Um, I had the clothes that they gave me to leave the prison with. I was then eventually ended up in emergency accommodation. I was under the care of the home treatment team who just wanted me signed off because as long as I wasn't going to do anything stupid to myself that day, then I was all right. And things just got worse and worse in my own brain. Um, Eventually, by chance, I met Dr. Sue Ferrier from the London Till Service, Veterans Mental Health, and started getting some help and treatment from the team there. Now, how could this have helped me? You could probably see that already with some of the guest speakers that we've got, how, how they're helping to close the gap. So maybe firstly, when I went to my GP, had I had a referral off saying this man's suicide to the Veterans Mental Health Service, then maybe they could have got me the help and support. When I was in the psychiatric hospital, again, maybe somebody could have attended from the TIL service, asked me different questions or asked me them in a different way. And maybe then that second attempt on my life may not have happened. In, in prison, leaving prison, getting housing, all things that just made things worse and worse. And the fact is, what, what's the point? Um, the other tough thing as well is I had friends that were trying to support me through this and they had no idea where to go and who to ask for help. So with the HIS service now, if somebody needs referring, they could be referred by friends and family. Um, Self-referral is possible. But from my experience and that of talking to other veterans, sometimes we don't ask for help because we're either embarrassed, ashamed, um, don't think we're worthy, um, uh, you know, and all the other reasons that you'll all know about. So sometimes it's not that easy to refer yourself. Now, what are the biggest benefits, I think, 
are one of them is the fact that there's veterans involved in the care pathway. So firstly, the, it could be any veteran anywhere across London and the TIL service or the Veterans High Intensity Service will help them. So with the veteran peer support workers, sometimes what we're going to find is people are probably more likely so, to open up to a veteran or a peer, somebody that's been through it. They, they just open up and maybe be more encouraged to turn up for the appointments that I know I kept getting out of, which wasn't a good thing, but the struggle to get to the appointment was the first hurdle that I had to overcome. Uh, the other advantage of the way the peer support worker works is it helps connect all the services. As Rob said earlier, that the high intensity service may not provide all the care, but they will be the first point of contact for all the care. Because what I do know is if people are uh, referred somewhere and the the charity or department or organisation referred to doesn't get in contact with them, they'll give up. And ultimately we all see the news and we all see on social media what happens when veterans start to give up. So I'm hoping that with everybody working together and the expertise that they've got the high intensity service, because one thing I do know is sometimes people are scared to open up to civilians. From my experience and the experience of the other veterans that you've heard from, the, the people at the high intensity service know a lot about what goes on in our heads. And the more that people know what go on in our heads, the easier it is for them to provide the help. So what I'd like to do now is hand back to Rob and thank Rob and his team for all the help that I've had in the past. Thank you. And thanks to you, Anthony, too, for you know telling that personal and powerful story and also for being involved uh, with the his so far. So the final person uh, we're going to turn to today is Alyssa Joy, who's a senior clinical psychologist working across London Region um, NHS Veteran Services. So Alyssa, would you like just to tell us briefly about the other mental health services available for veterans? Sure. Um, thank you, Anthony, for sharing your story. I think it kind of really brings to life um, a lot of the, the sorts of issues that um, we try to really help with in all of our services. Um, so the TILS is the front door to the London Region uh, Mental Health Veteran Services. It stands for um, Transition, Intervention and Liaison Service. And any veteran can access this for comprehensive assessment and for treatment and, and um, support for other needs. And the TILS sees a range of veterans with different needs. So for example, people who are transitioning from military service who need support with their mental health and managing that transition. Um, we also see many veterans who've left the service years before and they might need support and advice in accessing locally based psychological and social care. And then the CTS or the complex treatment service is for those who may need therapy um, for a mental health condition connected to their military service. Um, often uh, these clients have been unable to access um, the right support locally or they may have had some sort of treatment and support, but it's been limited. And if you are a UK Armed Forces veteran or if you're supporting a veteran in the London region with a mental health need um, alongside any other difficulties, then we would encourage you to refer. And like um, people have said, uh, you can self refer. Family members can refer. Other professionals who might be working with you can prefer. So we're quite um, sort of open to taking referrals from from all over. And um, it's the same referral form. It's the same website same telephone number um, will get you the right support, whether that's from TILS, uh, the CTS or the HIS. Thank you, Alyssa, and thanks to all of our guest speakers today. Uh, so our representatives from the High Intensity Service Collaborative, along with Anthony and Alyssa, are now going to be taking some of your questions and comments about the High Intensity Service. There's still time to send some thoughts or questions through if you'd like to. So I'll, I'll just turn to some of the, the, the questions that we've had now. The first one comes um, and says, how do people access the high intensity service? Do they need to be on the care pathway? So the, the simple answer to that is that people don't need to be open to any other service. They can refer themselves through um, by going to the website address that I'm pointing to now 
uh, downloading a referral form and sending it through, or they can call uh, the telephone number, which will show you at the end of this uh, presentation today. In terms of working with other NHS trusts, um, perhaps Anthony, you might like to speak about some of the work that we've done there. Yes, um, the NHS trusts that are working with Camden and Islington, it's all the London Borough NHS trusts and they're all aware of the service that we're providing because we've done talks around all of them explaining everything that happens within the HIS service. So the, the, what we're talking about today is everybody in London, different parts of the country will have their own access to their own high intensity service. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Um, so another question about the referral process. I think we answered that one. A professional is able to make a referral um, and also we take self referrals. So anybody can refer in to the high intensity service uh, and anyone living in the London wide region is eligible. We've had a question about is this a service for British veterans or will you see veterans from abroad as well? So today's launch um, is specific to the London region and for people who are living in the London region. Um, perhaps Simon, would you like to say anything more about other areas of England? Um, yeah, sorry, ju just to get the question right, I think um, there was a question about British veterans either living abroad or um, non-British veterans, if you like. Yeah. So the high intensity um, service and the NHS service um, specifically, if you are a UK British national veteran, if you like, then you're entitled to the service. And clearly that falls into um, 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 some of the other small finite areas of that. Um, but just so that everybody is aware, these Pathfinder programmes, as Nikki mentioned at the beginning, are going on all over the um, UK or, or sorry, all over England. Um, and they are slightly different and they're slightly different for a reason, because NHS England have asked to get the best possible outcome here over a couple of years. So they're all servicing the same sort of people, but they got slightly different um, projects so that we can look at over two years which models or which aspects of the different models will work for the future and all come together and hopefully um, the majority of what we see is very similar. I hope that answers the question, Rob. Yeah, thank you, Simon. Thanks. Uh, if you're if you're a UK uh, British Forces uh, veteran, you can you can refer through. We've had a question which asks, how can somebody struggling silently and privately self refer? And, and you can self refer. Alyssa, would you like to say a little bit more about working with someone who might be struggling to talk about their difficulties? Sure. Um, I think that can be one of the biggest obstacles to accessing um, help for mental health, particularly in veterans, as Anthony was um, talking about earlier. And I think. Um, you know, we do kind of try, we keep things confidential when you're when you're coming into the service. And um, what's what's really helpful is that if there's concerns about that, um, you can always have a discussion with one of the team members to kind of highlight what those are and sort of have more of a introductory chat if you're kind of really concerned about um, sort of what what you disclose and what what the whole experience might look like. So we're quite an open service and quite accessible from that perspective. Thank you, Alyssa, thanks. Um, and I'm just thinking, Katie, would you like to say a little bit more about how a family member could access as well um, and break down those barriers to access? classic struggling to unmute myself. Um, so if a veteran is accessing the HIS service, the family <coughs> will have a discussion with um, one of the family officers with the um, HIS service and they will be offered the opportunity to be referred across to the Ripple Pond. Um, so we don't have um, people working within HIS as it were, we're sort of running alongside the, the service. Um, and if the 
family member decides they would like to be referred across to us, some of their sort of basic information will be sent. So we've got kind of an understanding of, um, of their situation. They will speak then to one of my colleagues who will kind of run through the story, run through their situation and decide kind of with them what their best um, options are. So some people might just need someone to talk to um, and a, a sort of someone to lean on, in which case they can then be part of our kind of Ripple Pond community and access the peer support network, which I spoke about earlier, sort of, you know, face to face meetings when they're allowed, um, Zoom meetings, talks, Facebook. Um, but if the if their needs are higher or they have um, a lot of obstacles they want to overcome, they can be offered a mentor where they work to that with them sort of one to one um, and they'll help them access kind of appointments, um, other services that might be able to help sort of um, working with uh, the citizen advice, booking appointments, that kind of thing, just a sort of prop to help you um, overcome whatever it is that you need to overcome. So I think that that for us is really important because it just means that if the family are getting that support they themselves will kind of be stronger um, and more able to offer the support to the veteran um, no one person is kind of um, being focused on and they're kind of working and hopefully then the, the sort of veteran and the skills and the, the advice they're getting from Stoll walking with the wounded and the other um, team with the HIS service and their family will be able to kind of put all these new tools and and you know things that they've learned and things they've been working on together to sort of um, move forward from that from whatever situation it is that they're in so that's our hope. Okay thank, thank you Katie. So we've had a few more questions just about general referral process and just to remind people again that if, if you're a veteran or you're supporting a veteran who's living in the London region you can refer them uh, they can self-refer uh, to the website that's above me there and uh, you know we we also would welcome uh, joint work with any uh, statutory or charity agency to try and support our veterans better we've had a, a couple of questions from uh, drug and alcohol recovery services here about um, eligibility for their clients and absolutely we would want to work closely with you and, and uh, work in collaboration to try and uh, help that veteran as best as we could. Uh, Claire, I don't know if you'd like to say a bit more about how Stoll uh, members of their collaborative might joint work with people, with other agencies. OK, um, thank you. As other people have described, the um, house um, Stoll provides um, a support worker um, and alongside walking the wounded and the other partners and we at what the support workers role is really to go in um, with um, when a referral um, happens and they really work with the person and wherever they are at in terms of geographically as long as they're within the the, the London area as you hear as you'll see and you'll hear you know we it, it's a very quick responsive um, service but also we will work with the organization so for example I've seen there's quite a few um, questions coming up about drug and alcohol services the service would go in and actually work with the organization but more importantly work with the person and find out what the person wants but also support the organization to work with the person they don't necessarily take over I think that's really important we don't go in and just sort of parachute in take the person out and everything's going to be um, you know <laughs> perfect we're very much looking at where that person is but also to make sure that actually the that there are actually also really good links within the local services and we will the actual his team will provide support to those local services so also so the veteran knows that when the his service that when their relationship with the his service does come to the end that there will be other people in their community that can help them i hope that answers the question thank you claire thanks so we've had another question here which uh, asks can you talk us what through what the treatment process could look like. So basically we will work with somebody for between three and six months and initially it's literally trying to get the veteran through the door um, or, or, go, or us going through their door if you like to offer them a really thorough assessment and try and think about what their needs are and how we're going to help them to meet those. Um, and if there's some difficulties with uh, talking to like an NHS clinician, then, you know, that could be a, a veteran to veteran first conversation uh, if that's needed. 
And then from that point, we will really uh, then link in with the, our partner agency workers. We'll try and um, meet needs around housing or you know uh, finances, those other kind of issues. In terms of accessing psychological therapies, we'll offer introductory work in the high intensity service just to help to manage some of those um, more immediate strong emotions that might be coming up for people who are in a in an urgent care situation. And Alyssa, would you like to say a little bit more about the the, the further therapy process after that point? Sure. So um, as Rob just mentioned, um, within the HIS, um, in terms of um, therapeutic or psychological input, it tends to be trying to help stabilize those strong emotions. Um, people can then, and we can, we work re really closely on this side, can come into the complex treatment service for um, more in-depth psychological work. And usually that would be um, once the HIS has have kind of done a lot of work to help settle things a little bit for that person so that um, any further therapy is kind of really useful and, and the, the client can benefit from it. So for example, um, if there's quite complex substance misuse difficulties, you know, a lot of work might be done initially on helping with that with other organizations. Um, you know, strong um, uh, thoughts and urges um, to self-harm or suicidal thoughts that might be worked with more in the HIS. And then we would try to continue some of that work in the complex treatment service. Um, in the complex treatment service, we have the scope to offer up to 32 sessions of psychological therapy. So it's um, more substantial than a lot of other mental health services out there. And, um, you know, as as we mentioned earlier, we work with a range of difficulties. So um, very common one is the effects of trauma and PTSD, whether that's related to um, uh, combat related experiences, uh, bullying, other experiences that happen before military service. And then as well, we can we can do some of that work also in the till. So there's a lot of flexibility and scope to trying to uh, work on, you know, the various mental health difficulties that people present with in these other services. So that's why um, increasingly we're trying to kind of really work jointly to be able to kind of meet the client's needs dependent on what they are. Thanks, Alyssa, thanks. We, we've had a question here about using a, uh, a social prescribing model within your service. Um, Simon, would you like to say anything about how walking with the wounded um, workers are uh, are working alongside people in that manner at the moment? Yeah, thanks, Rob. So I think we all um, understand and agree that working to get the best clinical outcome to stabilise your mental health moving forward, all of your other social sort of needs need to be in the best manageable state as possible um, because going into a therapy or um, a, a, a clinical environment to support you with your mental health if there's lots of barriers in the way it's going to take a long time potentially or it may not be successful the knock-on effect to it not being successful is maybe that person doesn't ask for help again in the future so we're now just um, making the situation worse potentially. So what's been recognised, and um, I believe it's, this has been um, wanted for quite a while, quite a while now. What's been recognised is if we tackle the social support element at the same time, doesn't matter what it is. Maybe the individual is just um, severely isolated and has no idea how to ask for help in other areas, or whether there's um, um, some uh, um, addiction issues going on now. Clearly, that clinical bit is is linked there. Maybe there's um, financial um, issues going on. If you tackle that, that lowers the stress level of the individual, which will helpfully then make the pathway for the clinical side a lot smoother. And you know what? Even in some instances, it negates the need for the clinical pathway at times. Thanks, Simon. So we've had a, a few questions about about pathways in general, actually, and about joint working. And I think just as a general comment, what I'd really like to say is that you know the high intensity service is all about collaboration. 
uh, with with veterans, with their families, with charities, um, with NHS or local authority organisations. So if, you, if you're watching today and you would like to refer a, a veteran in the London region, then please go for it. And if you're a service that would like to get, you know, more involved along, you know, with working alongside the high intensity service, then also please uh, give us a call on the number that you can find on the website. So perhaps the uh, the final question for today, I'd like to hand to Anthony, which is just to say how are veterans going to be involved in the high intensity service project going forwards? OK, uh, I think it's probably if I start with what we've just briefly done in the past, everything that you've heard from all the speakers has had full involvement all the way along from veterans and service users of the existing service. So when you hear about people having assessments, we've been involved in how those assessments might look from the person who's being assessed. So although they are clinical outcomes on those, Sometimes when you get given a whole bunch of forms when you're feeling unwell, one thing you might do is not bother reading them after the person's gone because there's just too much written down on that bit of paper. Um, so we've tried to make that less daunting for people and introduce it at different points. Um, we've also been part of the implementation board. There's veterans on the implementation board to help get the HIS high intensity service up and running. And going forward, what that means is there will also be veterans on the governing board for the high intensity service within London. So at all points, there will be people that, as we call them, they've got lived experience, they've been in the forces and they've had mental health issues. And that's not just, and, and one thing I will point out here, because it probably hasn't come across as well as I think maybe it could have, this isn't just about PTSD, it's about mental health problems because there's a lot of people out there think they need help for PTSD and what we've got to do and what the veterans will do on the governing board is make sure that the direction we started off in is the direction we go in and any changes that we get feedback from service user groups from other veterans that are getting treatment help and care we will be their voice on this board to explain what might need changing or what's going really really well and we need to do a lot more of it. So hopefully that answers the question, Rob. It does, yeah. Thank, thank you, Anthony. And, and really important point that it's not just about PTSD, it's about a whole range of uh, mental health conditions. Yeah, thanks, Anthony. So that's our final question of the morning, and we're going to draw the webinar to a close now. I'd like to thank all of our partners, uh, our panel and our speakers today for their involvement and for making the collaboration um, hopefully a success. I'd like to thank everyone who's taken time to attend the webinar today uh, or to ask a question. So the invite to this webinar has got attached all of the information about how to refer to us or to have a consultation. Um, or if you'd like more information about the London Region High Intensity Service um, or if you'd like to work with us. Um, so we're going to show the contacts uh, again at the end of the screen. Um, but. Thanks for everyone who's joined today and best wishes.